Historical sports events are those events in the history of sports which made a huge difference in the world in one way or another. While some events were considered historic because they ended lifelong discords between two countries, some are known for having created a discord. There are other historic sports events which were life-changing for the sportsmen who took part in it because the game changed their future while other sportsmen changed the future of the game. Since the time man has been walking the earth, he has indulged in ways that can help him find food and shelter and fend for him. He had to be strong and tactical to ensure that he could keep his family or his tribe safe from other men as well as wild animals. Even since it has been considered for people to be fit and healthy so that they can look for food and find shelter for themselves. As tribes grew into societies and gradually man built borders separating themselves from others, they began to settle into lives that were more comfortable and it was not necessary any longer for everyone to be strong and fit and healthy because food and shelter was available easily. Although there is no way to find out what was the first sport ever played, many consider wrestling and boxing to be the first sports. This was because the ancient era saw a lot of slave trading which led to competitions between slaves to prove their caliber. With the first recorded ancient Olympic Games being held in 760 BC with just one event in the Games, a foot race, we have come to the latest Olympic Games being held in Rio de Janeiro in 2016 with 28 sporting events. Sports Events Between Countries at War when countries were at war, sports were still trying to find common grounds for them, a place where they can end their differences to meet each other in the true spirit of sportsmanship. Sports has helped countries find peace, but some sports events have also ushered war. Blood in the Water Match The 1956 water polo semi-final match between Hungary and Soviet Union is often referred to as the Blood in the Water Match. Unfortunately, this match was more than a commemoration of Hungary's victory against USSR 4-0. The match was held in Melbourne at the 1956 Olympics. It took place on December 6, 1956, with the Hungarian Revolution fresh in the mind of the players. On October 23, 1956, the students of Budapest University of Technology and Economics rose against the Soviet puppet government of Budapest and began an uprising that was difficult to control. In an effort to bring the uprising to an end, Soviet tanks made their way to the roads of Hungary on November 1. These tanks attacked the revolutionists and were soon joined by airstrikes and artillery bombardments. The Hungarian water polo team was preparing for the Olympics at that time in a mountain training camp in Budapest. They were soon moved to Czechoslovakia so that they do not get caught up in the revolution. They had no news of the uprising till they reached Melbourne two months later. The carnage at the revolution had created a fervour in the players to win the game and return the pride of Hungary. On the day of the match, the Hungarians and the Russians were prepared to beat each other in a match that was more than just water polo on that day. It was a match for pride. Kicks and punches were exchanged between both countries and Hungarian player Ervan Zator seemed to be the hero of the day as he scored two goals. The game was won by Hungary 4-0, but just in the final minutes of the match, Zator was struck by Russian player Valentin Prokopov. Zador had a bleeding gash on his forehead, which brought many angry spectators to the concourse abusing and spitting on the Russians. Zador was struck near the pool, and many exaggerated that the pool turned red, which is why the match is often called as the blood in the water match. Hungary won the gold medal, but Zator was not able to play in the finals because of his injury. He, along with some of his teammates, chose to look for asylum in the West instead of returning to their homeland, which was under the pro-Soviet regime. 1971 US-China Ping Pong Diplomacy United States and China did not have diplomatic or economic relations for almost 20 years. This began with China's entry into the Korean War in 1950. United States saw China as an aggressor and neither country involved themselves in any form of relationship with each other. But the 31st World Table Tennis Championship, held in Nagoya, Japan, in 1971, gave the two countries a chance to establish a truce. 
When the US table tennis team was in Japan for the championship, they received an invitation to visit China. People's Republic of China was known for the importance it gave to sports and diplomacy. The country had allowed athletes to travel overseas during the period of isolation when traveling was restricted. The invitation was received by the US team on April the 6th and they visited China on April the 10th, becoming the first US nationals to have visited China since 1949. It was extremely unusual for the players to have been invited to China, even though major US diplomats like Senator Eugene McCarthy had talked about his interest in visiting the country, but was unable to get the trip arranged. The visit was a result of a friendly encounter of a Chinese player with a player from the United States. Glenn Cohen of the United States table tennis team missed his bus when he was practicing the game with Chinese player Liang Geliang. When it was time to close the training area, Cohen did not have his bus waiting for him and he was glad to find a Chinese player waving at him from the Chinese team bus. Cohen was talking casually with the Chinese through an interpreter when Zhuang Zidong, a popular Chinese player, came up to him and gifted him a silk screen portrait of Huang Shan Mountains. This chance meeting led to the eventual invitation from China for the US players to visit the country. Nine players, four officials and two spouses visited China on April the 10th and enjoyed a pleasant stay till April the 17th. They played games, visited historical monuments like the Great Wall of China and the Summer Palace and also watched ballet. This event in sports history helped two countries resolve their political concerns and led to the visit of President Richard Nixon to China, which thawed the conflicts and gave rise to political and economic relationship between USA and China. Football War Between Honduras and El Salvador In 1969, Honduras and El Salvador clashed against each other when growing tensions between the two countries saw football fans getting violent at the 1970 FIFA World Cup qualifier. This war is also termed as the Soccer War or the 100-Hour War. While it bears the name of football and the war was started because of continuous violence between football fans, the true reason for the war was deeper. Honduras and El Salvador are neighbors and Honduras is over five times the size of El Salvador. In 1969, the Salvadoran population, 3.7 million, however, outnumbered the Honduran population, 2.6 million. This led to Salvadorans gradually migrating to Honduras, where most of the farming lands were owned by wealthy landowners. Many Salvadorans who moved to Honduras had taken up farming and in 1969 they made up 20% of the peasant population in El Salvador. A land reform which was enforced in 1967 enforced Salvadoran immigrants who had occupied land illegally to give up their land which was then redistributed to the Hondurans. This sudden change in the laws created anarchy and chaos among the immigrants who were left with no land and were being forced to return to their homeland. This began tensions between the two countries. When players from Honduras and El Salvador met in the 1970 FIFA World Cup qualifier, they had not imagined that the game would lead to a massacre. The first match was played in Tegucigalpa, the capital of Honduras, and the second match was played in San Salvador, which is the capital of El Salvador. Both the matches saw extreme violence among the fans. The first match was won by Honduras, while El Salvador won the second one. In a playoff match at Mexico City on June 26, 1969, El Salvador stood victorious. Once the match was over, El Salvador announced the dissolution of all diplomatic ties with Honduras. On July 14, 1969, El Salvador attacked Honduras. The Salvadorans were able to advance quickly on the first day against the Hondurans because of the element of surprise, but Honduras retaliated the next day and requested for an intervention by Organization of American States. The war lasted four days, but created bitterness among the two countries, which lasted for more than a decade. While sports is usually known for bringing peace and harmony among people, this was one instance when a sport event led to war. But like we know now, there was more to the football war than just the violence of the football fans. Jesse Owens' incredible performance in 1936 Olympics in Berlin 
The 1936 Olympics served a political purpose for Hitler, who wanted to show the world that the Aryan race was far more superior to others. When Owens arrived in Berlin with the rest of his United States teammates, he was greeted warmly by the population and many girls adored Owens. But Hitler was not happy with his popularity and fame because he hoped for the German athletes to dominate the Olympics and win most of the medals. Owens had other plans for Hitler. He won four medals for his country and proved Hitler otherwise. Owens won the 100-meter sprint, he won the long jump with an 8.06-meter long jump, he also won the 200-meter sprint and his fourth gold was won in the 4 times 100-meter sprint relay. Hitler was very annoyed with the winning of the colored Americans. By proving Hitler wrong and by winning four medals, Owens did his country proud. 1987 Cricket Test Match in India While World Cups and World Championships tend to dominate most of the historical sports events, the 1987 Cricket Test Match had less to do with the results of the match and more to do with the political diplomacy that it encompassed. India and Pakistan are two countries that have regularly been at conflict with each other. On the morning of February 21, 1987, the Pakistani President, General Ziaul Haq, landed at the Delhi airport. The Indian Prime Minister, Rajiv Gandhi, was taken by surprise at this sudden arrival of the General. It was made known that the General had flown to the Indian capital to watch a test cricket match that was being played at Jaipur between India and Pakistan. It is said that Gandhi and the general had a brief conversation and this was followed by the general being invited for dinner with the prime minister. They discussed about the current tensions between the two countries and worked a plan that will lead to gradual withdrawal of the military troops by both the countries. The conflicts gradually mellowed down and the countries came to better terms. This was not the only time when cricket was used by India and Pakistan for diplomacy. General Pervez Musharraf had also visited India to watch a cricket match which led to further dialogue between the leaders of the two countries. Indian Prime Minister Manmohan Singh had also invited Prime Minister Yusuf Raza Gilani of Pakistan to witness a cricket match in Mohali. Gilani accepted the invite which helped in diminishing the tensions that had arisen between the countries after 2008 Mumbai attacks. 1988 Seoul Olympics showed economic difference between North and South. Korea The 1988 Summer Olympics was awarded to South Korea. It became the bone of contention for the two countries, South and North Korea, when North Korea realized the positive impact it will have on the economic standing of South Korea. The communist North Korea did not want to have anything to do with the games in the beginning. In fact, it also convinced many other communist countries to stay away from the Olympics as well. However, communist powers like China and the Soviet Union seemed intent at attending the Games no matter where it was held. This spurred North Korea to change its viewpoint of the Games and soon it requested to be a part of the Olympics by having part of the Games hosted in North Korea and part of them being hosted in South Korea. It suggested a total of 11 games to be held in the country, which was in proportion to the population in the two countries. A number of meetings were held with the International Olympic Committee IOC, to negotiate the co-hosting of events, but all of it was in vain, since North Korea did not get what it wanted. North Korea was supported by Cuba's Fidel Castro in their claims. When the negotiations failed, Cuba, Ethiopia, Nicaragua, Albania and Seychelles boycotted the 1988 Olympics along with North Korea. It was speculated that Madagascar will be a part of the Games and the country was expected on the day of the inauguration of the Games at Seoul but it did not turn up at the last moment joining North Korea and its supporters. The 2016 Olympics held in Rio heralded a new change to the relationship between the two countries when gymnasts from North Korea and South Korea clicked a picture of themselves and posted it on social media. The world hailed the photo as a representation of the spirit of games. From the 1988 boycott of North Korea to the 2016 photo which brought the two countries together for a brief moment in one pic, sports has given us some very beautiful moments in history. Events that glorified a sportsman. 
sports has motivated many men to break current world records, win the medals that they have dreamed of or become undisputed champions in their niche. While most sportsmen aim at gaining popularity at one time or another of their career in sports, there are some who became historic sports heroes when they achieved an unprecedented feat. There are many names of famous sportsmen which may fill up long lists, but the ones mentioned are those who achieved something that was unimaginable. They went beyond their usual game and gave the world an amazing moment. Michael Phelps set the record for most medals won at a single Olympics. Michael Phelps astounded his fans and made his country proud by winning eight gold medals at the Beijing Summer Olympics in 2008. The previous record was held by Mark Spitz for seven gold medals. In addition to bagging the highest number of golds in a single Olympics, Phelps also set seven new world records. He proved his caliber and set a new record for many sportsmen to create their benchmarks. Phelps has a total of 28 Olympic medals and even though he had decided to retire in 2012 after the Olympics held in London, he announced a comeback in 2014. He won five gold medals and won silver in the 2016 Olympics held in Rio de Janeiro. He is considered to be the most successful athlete of the Games for the fourth Olympics in succession. Michael Jordan's final shot in 1998 NBA Finals at Delta Center Michael Jordan is one of the finest NBA players that the world has known. His popularity grew quickly with his success in the game and while he has played amazingly well in a number of games, one game that is remembered by most people is the 1998 NBA Finals at Delta Center between the Chicago Bulls and Utah Jazz. The Bulls won the game 87-86, winning their sixth championship in eight years. The highest point of the game was when Michael Jordan hit a jump shot at the last moment with just 5.2 seconds left in the game. Michael Jordan pushed Brown Russell and hit a go-ahead jumper to win the game for the Bulls. There was a lot of speculation regarding the push-off, but it wasn't clear because the cameras did not catch him in the act of pushing Russell. The game was Michael Jordan's last game with the Bulls. Soon after, popular names like Scotty Pippen and Dennis Rodman also bid farewell to the Bulls. Coach Phil Jackson sought retirement as well, although he and Jordan returned to NBA later. With popular figures leaving Bulls, the Chicago Bulls was no longer as powerful as before. The game got a lot of viewers and many fans remember that awesome win till this day. It was one of those events in NBA history that will last a long time in the memories of people who witnessed it. Wilt Chamberlain's 100-point game The National Basketball Association marks the game between Philadelphia Warriors and New York Knicks played on March 2, 1962 as the greatest game in NBA history because of Wilt Chamberlain's ability to hit the century mark in this game. The game was held at Hershey Park Arena in Hershey, Pennsylvania. Chamberlain had 98 points when the game had just 46 seconds left. He maneuvered from the five nicks and jumped to put the ball through the basketball hoop with a slam dunk. This got him to the 100 points. It is said that there was frenzy among the spectators who ran to touch the hero. The floor was filled with more than 200 spectators, each of them hoping to join in the celebrations of Chamberlain. It is not clear whether the last 46 seconds of the game were ever played because of the chaos from the spectators. NBA explains that the game was halted and it never resumed. This winning game had an extremely memorable experience for all fans and players at the arena. One of those historical sports events that will be remembered forever. Bob Beeman's Long Jump at 1968 Summer Olympics On October 18, 1968, Bob Beeman shattered the long jump world record by over two feet. With a long jump of 29 feet, two and a half inches, 8.9 meters, he held the world record of the longest jump for over 23 years till 1991 when Mike Powell broke his record by two inches. Beeman set the new world record at the 1968 Summer Olympics held in Mexico City. He was not sure what he had achieved since he was unaware of the metric system and when the announcer tore the distance jumped, he was unsure of his feet. 
His friend and coach Ralph Boston told him how amazingly well he had done and that he had broken the world record. It is said that when Beeman heard of his achievement, he was so shocked that he suffered a brief cataplexy attack. With his legs giving away, Beeman collapsed to his knees overwhelmed with his own act. He could not get back on his feet and was helped by his fellow competitors. Mike Powell had broken the world record at the World Championship in Tokyo. Beeman continues to hold the record for the longest jump in Olympics. Analysts found that a lot of environmental factors helped Beeman in his feet. The air had less resistance and he also got the advantage of a tailwind of 2 meters per second. After Beeman's jump, a major rainstorm blew through the place, making it difficult for other competitors to match Beeman's jump. Judgment Day Mike Tyson vs. Trevor Burbick Trevor Burbick and Mike Tyson fought against each other in a professional boxing match that was called Judgment Day. The match took place on November 22, 1986 at Las Vegas Hilton in Paradise, Nevada. The two renowned boxers were fighting for the WBC Heavyweight Championship. The entire event was put together by three of the major boxing organizations – the World Boxing Council, the World Boxing Association, as well as the International Boxing, Fe as well as the International boxing Federation, along with HBO. It aimed to recognize the undisputed heavyweight champion after boxing champion Liam Spinks in 1978. Berbick was 32 years old and had entered the fight as a champion, while Mike Tyson was 20 years old and had remained a record of being undefeated. Most of Tyson's matches were won through a knockout. The match saw Tyson dominating Berbick right from the beginning. He continued to pin down Berbick by hammering him with powerful punches. The fight ended at the 2.35 mark and Tyson was awarded the championship via technical knockout. It was a game that kept the entire audience at his feet all the time, trying to speculate the fate of the two players. Berbick continued his career, but he was not able to play any game that matched his previous successes. He did not fight for the heavyweight championship ever again. Tyson, on the other hand, was spurred by his success and continued to overpower many other renowned championships in the ring. Fight of the Century this was a boxing match between two undefeated sportsmen, WBC or WBA World Heavyweight Champion Joe Frazier and Heavyweight Champion Muhammad Ali. The match was held on March 8, 1971. There was a frenzy of media and spectators in Madison Square Garden where the match was held was packed with fans on both sides. The match had a deeper meaning for many Americans. Muhammad Ali had chosen not to be inducted for the Vietnam War. This outraged the government who striped him of his title in 1967. Till then, Ali had enjoyed an undefeated career in heavyweight championship. By 1971, he had become the symbol of the left-wing anti-establishment movement during the period when the government put a ban on his return to the ring. Frazier was also a strong contender of the World Heavyweight Championship. During Ali's exile from the ring, Frazier had won two championship belts and boxing authorities soon began to refer to him as a world champion. Before being banned from the ring, Ali had been an iconic champion who displayed unprecedented dexterity and speed. It was said that he could even predict the round in which he would knock off his opponents. But the exile had taken a toll on the championship, who was defeated by Frazier in the 15th round. Both the champions had put an excellent show for the audiences. This was Ali's first professional loss, but he refused to accept defeat by calling the outcome of the match a white man's decision. He defeated Frazier later in a third match, which was popularly known as the Thriller in Manila. The two rematches did not gain as much popularity because by the time they took place, America's political environment had changed and with the Vietnam War ended, Ali was no longer considered a traitor. Events that left a mark Sportsmen are motivated by their own need to do best in the sports they choose as well as the patriotic spirit of their country who they represent. With millions of fans cheering for them to win and make their country proud, sportsmen have more than just one responsibility in their mind. But the goal never changes. Their winning brings pride to themselves, their families and their country or race. Some sports events have had a larger mark than they expected. 
these sport events impacted an entire country. Players stood tall for their country, race and families when they took part in events that offered a global platform. Nelson Mandela supports South African rugby. Nelson Mandela served as the president of South Africa from 1994 to 1999. He was a revolutionary, he was against apartheid in South Africa and he strongly rallied against segregation. He was put behind bars for 27 years and his release led to the gradual fall of apartheid. South Africa stopped indulging in apartheid sports which brought an end to many sporting boycotts that had kept South Africa's players from attending various championships around the globe. After Mandela was selected president in South Africa's first ever multiracial elections in 1994, the country hosted the Rugby World Cup. Nelson Mandela seized this opportunity to show the people of his acceptance of people of all colours. In a country where the white communities had always shunned Mandela, he decided to use rugby as a stage for uniting all races through the spirit of games. On the day of the finals, Mandela appeared at the stadium in the Springbrook jersey and cap where 62,000 out of 63,000 people visiting the stadium were white. The final game was between New Zealand, All Blacks and South African Springboks. When South Africa won the game, Nelson Mandela shook hands with the captain, Francois Pianard, a symbol of change not just for the sport but for the country. The defining moment when Mandela stood with the captain uniting two races became a symbol of unity for the country and helped in reducing racial tensions. Black Pride at the Olympic Games Another major moment in sports history was when Tommy Smith and John Carlos raised their fists to symbolize Black Pride when they received their medals for the first and third place. This took place at the Mexico Olympic Games in 1968. The gesture, known as the Black Power Salute, was used by the sportsmen to show that they were against inequality in sports. Both the players were of African-American origin. When they rose to the podium to accept their medals, the two players raised a black-gloved fist when the American national anthem was being played in the background. They kept their hands raised till the anthem was over. This moment in history is recorded as one of the most obvious political statements that Olympics has ever experienced. All the three winners who received medals at the podium wore Olympic Project for Human Rights OPHR, badges. While the moment of the Black Power salute was a defining moment in the history of Olympics, it was deemed unfit for the players to use Olympics as a platform to make a political statement. Avery Brundage, president of the International Olympic Committee, asked the US team to ban the two players. After threats of having the entire team banned from Olympics, the US team complied. This act of racial protest is seen as a powerful moment even till this day. Both the players continued their career in athletics but were never able to play in Olympics any longer. Peter Norman, the Australian player who won the silver medal, was sympathetic of the protests of his competitors. Australia did not send any male sprinters in the next Olympics held in 1972. When Norman died in 2006, Smith and Carlos attended his funeral and were poor bearers. A similar act took place in the 1972 Olympics in Munich when Wayne Collette and Vincent Matthews staged a similar protest. Both the players were also banned from Olympics. Tiger Woods won Masters at a golf course that was once segregated. Tiger Woods' triumph at the 1997 Masters in Augusta was a victory celebrated throughout the race because Augusta was known for its segregation of players. He mentions in his autobiography, the 1997 master, My Story, about the fact that he had heard rumours that black golfers were not welcome. Everyone saw him as an African-American, although he proudly states that he is African-American only from his father's side. His mother was Asian. Woods did not enjoy a great start at the event, but with time, he built his momentum and by the final day of the Masters, he had turned all the anger of him not being able to play his best into fuel which forced him to stand out and eventually win the Masters. The victory was celebrated by him and all black golfers and all people of his race who had previously faced segregation. He had proved that the game was more than just about people of a specific colour. It was all about the spirit of games and the ability to stay motivated to do well and win in the game you are passionate about.
Battle of Sexes Bobby Riggs was one of the best tennis players in the world in 1940s. In 1951, Riggs retired from professional tennis, but he continued to promote the game and himself. He felt that females in tennis were not up to the rank, and in 1973, when Riggs was 55, he claimed that he could still beat any of the best female tennis players. He first challenged Billie Jean King, who was a young and successful female player. But when she declined, Margaret Court decided to accept the challenge. Court was 30, and she was one of the best players in the world at that time. The match was held in Ramona, California on May 13, 1973. 5,000 fans came to watch the match. Riggs played a great game and was able to win by 6-2, 6-1. His victory increased his popularity, but it came as a blow for many female tennis players. Proud of his achievement, Riggs taunted the female tennis players. Billie Jean King was prompted to prove him otherwise, so she offered to play Riggs in a match which is popularly called the Battle of Sexes. It was held in Houston, Texas on September 20, 1973. The match offered a $1,000 prize to the winner. When the match began, King fell behind, but she quickly recovered because she realized that the game was not just about being victorious for herself, but for all the female tennis players that she represented when playing against Riggs. She used Riggs' own tricks against him by staying at the baseline and making Riggs cover the entire court. She won the game, which was a best of five, by 6-4, 6-3, 6-3. Many critics felt that Riggs lost only because King was younger, but for Billie Jean King, this game was her opportunity to prove the world otherwise when it came to female tennis players. She was a women's activist and King strongly believed for equal play for men and women. Riggs' challenge had let down the female players, and if King did not match up to him, then she felt that female players may have felt demotivated and it could have ruined their reputation and self-esteem. Kerry Strug's 1996 Olympic win Kerry Strug has now retired from her professional career as a gymnast, but in the 1996 Olympics, she won the gold along with the hearts of all the people at the arena. She was a part of a seven-member U.S. team of gymnasts. The final competition was between the Russian and the U.S. teams. The first four U.S. gymnasts had not performed very well, struggling to attain a clean landing. Strug's teammate fell twice, which led to poor ranking by the judges. Strug was the last one in the team to perform. In her first attempt, she under-rotated the landing, which led to a severe fall in which she damaged her ankle. After a Russian performed on the floor, Strug had to vault a second time. She slowly limped to the end of the runaway and performed a vault landing on both her feet and then immediately hopping to her good foot after saluting the judges. Her final vault ensured the win for the US team and she instantly became a national hero. She was unable to take part in the individual all-around competition and event finals because of her damaged ankle even though she qualified for both. With the zeal to perform for her country, Strug had left many viewers astounded by her performance. She appeared in a number of talk shows and newspapers for her incredible performance. Sports has been a source of motivation for many people around the world. It brought together countries at war and it put people in the limelight who had never dreamed of such fame. Sports has been the one source of entertainment for centuries now. It continues to grow with new rules and new championships. In the spirit of sportsmanship, many people have been able to end long wars and hostile environments in the country. Sportsmen are seen as men and women beyond the limitation of a region or a border. They win hearts around the world. While there have been instances when sports led to war or warlike situations, in most events, sports play the peacekeeper. Sports play the peacekeeper. It helped people forget past differences and to grow together in unity and friendship. Many individuals are revered around the world for their unmatched performances in the sports they played. The history of sports is colourful and extremely mesmerising. It has the rise and fall of many renowned sportsmen. While there are many more historical events that sports has witnessed, these are the one that left an indelible mark in the minds of audiences. All of these events have had an impact that went beyond the game itself. It impacted countries, races and genders. 
These events are reminisced for their effects around the world and how people climbed popularity or fell into dismal abyss through these events.